Hello everybody out there, this is Seto Kaiba from your Yu-Gi-Oh! chat channel and today I'm going to profile for you guys my Gravekeeper deck. I've played Gravekeeper since they originally came out in set 7 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! box set series back in like 03, 04. Uh, they came out back in box 7 called the Pharos Guard and they've been out for over 10 years and I think the reason Gravekeepers have stayed relevant up to the present in some uh, maybe not competitive play, but Necro Valley especially has kept Gravekeepers in the talk of rogue decks for the longest time because Necro Valley just stops so many decks out there, each and every meta. And it's just such a good deck in general, Gravekeepers are. So I'm going to profile you guys this deck. And it's a different type of Gravekeeper deck than probably what you're used to. It's kind of like a Gravekeeper beat down deck. Think of photon type beat downs, Gravekeeper beat downs. Think of old school type Gravekeeper beatdown decks. It kind of goes with that theory, but it actually performs very well and can beat a lot of main meta decks out there. So, let's get started right away. We run three Spy out there. Three Spy. Spy's your combo play. You can do a whole bunch of different things with her. I love her. She's great. You know what she does. There's a whole bunch of different combinations she, she can do. Three Recruiter. It's your Witch of the Black Forest. Searches all your Gravekeeper needs, pretty much. Great versatile card. You pop it with the send it, all that shenanigans. Three Commandant. Some people run two. They say it's cloggy. Uh, because I run Visionary with this deck, it runs fairly well by itself. Uh, if you have two Necro Valleys by choice in hand or something like that, you just make it a beat stick or something like that. It, it's always a good card in hand. It's also good if you get Necro Valley, you can go. And run over a Thunder King Ryo or something like that. It's always been a good versatile card for me. Three Descendants. Some people say run two. I prefer running three. Bottomless is a card. Fiendish Chain's a card. Uh, if one gets banished at one, you can't use its effect. It's always good to have extra ones to normal summon because if you normal summon with this deck, uh, if you have maybe a spy, uh, flip the spy, get recruiter, normal summon uh, Descendant, pop two monsters, or back row, and then proceed from there. Uh, it works very well, and I've always liked 3, and plus, because I'm running Visionary, which I'll explain later, it works well, so you can have one in hand, discard it, keep Visionary alive. Now, as I just showed you, I showed my Visionary. Now, you probably have never seen a Visionary pretty much in a Gravekeeper deck. Let me explain to you why I think he is an underrated boss monster, and some people have agreed with me on this point, especially with my friends after dueling this deck. Why is Visionary a good card? He's an annoying boss monster. He is one of those cards your opponent probably is not going to know how to play out around. The only way to get rid of this guy is two ways, pretty much. You A, you compulsory evacuation device him, okay, or you banish him. Those are pretty much the only two ways you can get around this guy. If you have a great people in hand, which this deck is built on the theory that you want to summon a lot of beat stick monsters, then you're fine with this. You know, you'll have Gravekeepers in hand. You'll have two to three Gravekeepers in hand. You can get out of your opponent's Dark Holes, uh, Torrential Tribunes, Mirror Forces, all that other stuff that they'll try to use. If they try to pop him, if they try to destroy him by effect, he's not going to get destroyed. You just discard a card. It's only pretty much banishing this guy or compulsing his Tribute Summon. And he only needs one Tribute Summon, Gravekeeper. So you can go Spy, Recruiter, Sacrifice re the Recruiter, sa uh, Summon, Visionary. You may think two is too much, believe me, it comes in handy because you can special summon, and if one gets banished, you always have another one in deck for later on. If you get him out, also, uh, your second turn or late in the duel, kind of midway through the duel, it can win you the, uh, he can get very powerful, and you, he can win you the game single-handedly. He is single-handedly won me games with main meta decks. Two guard, you may think two guards too much. I think it's great. It's my walking compulsory evacuation device like Commandant is my walker and terraforming. So why is he so good? In this meta, I can pop back a big eye. I can pop back a... There's a whole bunch of things I can pop back. Ophion, he's an out from Ophion. Uh, whatever. Just a lot of rogue decks out there. He's good to be... You know, he's very effective. I've even seen, actually, recently, I've seen around my... With my friends that he's being used with spellbook uh, players because they can main him in the deck and they can just flip him up, pop back your opponents like dragons and stuff like that, or Ophion. You know, I've seen him being used in a lot of different decks, just like Spy can be used for, I used to see in Rescue Rabbit decks. 
but he's very versatile, and you can use him if he survives, you can use him for Descendant, or you can use him discarding, but to get out from big monsters like Sheehan and stuff like that, because Sheehan is very annoying. Two assailants. Best idea, and I, I, I thought about it for a while, and I decided to add two. Uh, for the fact that this is kind of like a beatdown deck, he can get to 28 attack with or more with Solidarity, but also the fact that a lot of monsters out there have great effects, uh, great attack, low defense, and that's the weak point. And that's how you can get over that. And he's been very versatile. Great. I, people say run two, uh, run one, you know, run one, run one. I'm like, uh, try it out. And it works out a lot better. Now, this is the only one that even myself I question on sometimes. But there's reasons why, and I wouldn't replace it with anything else. The reason I run Spear Soldier is because of Visionary. I wouldn't want to waste an assailant or something like that because that's going to be more helpful usually against my opponent than a spear. Spear is good just for fodder. Discard it, keep visionary alive. Or I could use it also because he's a piercer and because it can be just a 28 piercing beat stick if I have solidarity out on the field. So that's very effective. Um, if they ever made a new gravekeeper, he may get taken out for that. But for right now, he's going to stay in there. Uh, because I want a lot of Gravekeepers to keep Visionary alive, because sometimes you're like, I just need one Gravekeeper monster to seal the deal if he tries to destroy my Visionary, and usually you get that. That's what you want. Three, Necro Valley, good card, great card, love it. It's the card that keeps Gravekeepers relevant. Next up, two Solidarities. I replaced these for Warrior Tribute. The reason why I don't run Warrior Tribute no more is Warrior Tribute is not guaranteed to go all first turn. It's consistency issues. If you get Warrior Tribute late in a duel, I don't like it. Sometimes I switch. I, if Warrior Tribute was to come back to three, I would run it. But I'm running a replacement of Solidarity. I may run a third. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, running around with 28 beat sticks. Some decks out there just have a hard time getting over 28 beat sticks. And when you can consistently normal summon 28 beat sticks, it's really hard to get over. Two Great for Steel, and the reason I say 28 B6 is because you usually have Necrovale on the field. Two uh, Great for Steel gets to reuse your broken plays, get cards back to hand so you can do different things. It pretty much keeps hand control with this deck. Love it. Two MSTs, I do not like back row. Uh, other staple cards Dark Hole, Pot. Let's go over the So we got Book of Moon, Pot of Duality, Wonder Wand, Dark Hole. Uh, I only won one pot because I know some people want it because they're trying to search for Warrior Tribute. I like one because I do special summon in the deck and I prefer just to one one. If I don't get it first turn, it's sometimes annoying. But also, Wonder Wand is good because don't be afraid to use it. Don't just think you have to use it with Recruiter. Don't be afraid to use it for other Gravekeeper targets. Two, Ride of Spirit. Uh, great combo card, can use different things. You know, great combos. Two Mirror Forces. Some people think I should replace it for something else. Honestly, I prefer the Mass Removal still. Uh, people do run E-Dragons around me, but I usually have other ways to get them out uh, in the side deck for that. One Torrential, one Bottomless, one Fiendish Chain. You can switch them out if you want to uh, for either or, but I find the more versatility with Traps comes in handy more because sometimes Bottomless won't do the trick. Fiendish Chain will do the trick against like a Lily because people still run Chaos Dragons a lot around where I live. One Dark Illusion. This card is pretty much my solemn judgment of the deck. It states pretty much that as long as I any card that targets a dark monster, spell card, trap card, effect, you destroy that card and it's pretty much a counter trap and it's a replacement for solemn judgment because I don't want to lose half my life points. Okay? And because the, pretty much everything's a dark except um, Commandant. Uh, last two cards. Scrap Iron Scarecrow comes in handy sometimes. Um... I actually have saved my ass many a time from some decks if I get a bad hand. Rarely do I get bad hands, but honestly, this card has saved my ass a lot. And this card's amazing. My friend suggested it for me about a year ago. Because it's a way of special summoning Visionary. Uh, and plus, against E-Dragons, it's so funny. Or any deck that main decks uh, Effect Veiler, they have to special summon that uh, Spellcaster in attack mode. You may think against Prophecy that's a bad thing. Usually it's not unless they got a Spellbook of Power. But, um... <laughs> Believe me, if you summon a visionary, you're just like ram, attack the effect veiler, run the effect veiler over, flick, you know, difference in damage. It's just so fun to watch them cry because they may get 3,000 attack damage because they didn't have a 
it's just fun. And the uh, side deck, uh, the only side deck card you're going to ever really want to run in this type of Gravekeeper deck is because you're running Solidarity is Gaga Ga Cowboy. Besides that, you don't need to run anything else, really. I I'll tell you that right now. Um, I, I can't remember the last time I even ex exceeded with this deck. It's one of the few decks out there that I have really n haven't exceeded on a consistent basis. The last time I exceeded was probably five, six, seven months ago. Uh, I, I can't remember. It was like in a tournament I was in, and it was just to get, uh, I think, Gaga Ga Cowboy out. <laughs> uh, just finish the duel that way, but I didn't even need to. I could have still won a different way. But it's a very versatile deck. Check it out before you uh, discredit it. It actually works very well. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a whole bunch of different decks, but I love Gravekeepers. I've always loved them because they're ancient history. But till next time, everybody, take care. Have fun out there. Fight the main meta. Seto Kaiba, out.